Hi, I'm here at the ID Tech X show with Scott White, who's the CEO of Pragmatic. Scott, hi, thanks hi. for your time. Thank you. So, I guess in the sentence or two, can you tell us first about what technology your company makes? Yep. So at Pragmatic, we make flexible integrated circuits. So that's our, a wafer of our flexible integrated circuits, which if you like is the equivalent of silicon chips, but in plastic. So very thin, flexible, and very low cost. Okay. Now you've reached many uh, milestones this year. I mean, the first earlier in the year, which was really significant, is that your company announced you'd sold 20 million Flex ICs. Can you tell us a bit about what they're being used for and the use case that customers are getting? Yes, so our first products that we've launched are RFID circuits, so we're selling into uh, those markets and yes, as you say, within the first two months of launching it, I think we had uh, over 20 million uh, units wow. of orders and actually it's continued to grow since then, we just wow. haven't been able to announce the number. Um, so that's going into really a wide range of applications that are extending fairly well understood RFID use cases into a broader range of products than is possible with silicon. Um, so four main sectors, I guess, that we've seen um, seen take up in. One is fast moving consumer goods, smart packaging, which mm -hmm. is a you know, market we very much expected. Uh, toys and games, we've also seen a lot of interest in. And again, that's a market we've been involved in for some years, providing interactivity within physical games. Uh, two new markets, though, that have uh, really grown in the last six to 12 months are around uh, healthcare and medical devices. So be able to track consumable items, for example, in healthcare mm. systems and also waste management. So be able to help the uh, drive towards a circular economy by being able to identify items and drive them to the right recycling or um, uh, disposal source, right. uh, recycle them more effectively and actually get information about flows of waste in the right. environment to be able to improve infrastructure. Now in some of these cases, why are your customers using your flexible ICs, not a silicon chip version? So what, what's the benefits of your technology for? So the two primary benefits are mm. form factor and cost. Oh. Um, cost is the easiest to quantify. Right. Uh, and so there we can basically allow the whole RFID tag cost to be reduced substantially. So wow. not only is the our flexible IC lower cost than a standard silicon IC, but it also has some benefits in how you assemble that into the tag or the inlay that can make that lower cost by simplifying right. the antenna design, for example. Um, so that's always one important factor. Um, but the, the form factor is also quite important in many applications right. because this is going into everyday items, things like uh, thin flexible packaging or on the side of a bottle, uh, it's subject to an environment that right. silicon devices don't particularly like, uh, in, particularly, in particular where you get uh, hard impact, like on the side of a glass bottle. Right. Um, there's a number of uh, scenarios where uh, large brands have seen that they have fairly high failure rates in the field due to the silicon fracturing if it, if it gets a sharp impact, uh, whereas with a plastic chip you don't I'll have see. that issue. Right. Now, you know, let's not be around the bush. It's really hard to do what you're trying to do. You came up with a flexible IC, you know, displacing silicon. Others have tried it. They haven't been so successful. So what has allowed your technology to win? What have been the main features why you've been so successful? Yeah. I, at first, I'd just like to clarify one thing that I think in most cases we're not displacing silicon. Yeah. Um, you know, silicon definitely has benefits over right. what we can do. Right. And so in most cases, what we're doing is extending applications into areas where right. silicon is right. not able to deliver the right solution. But uh, it, you know, it's still a hard problem to solve. Yeah. And I think fundamentally the approach we've taken is quite different to many other companies. And the, you know, the company's name really is representative of the approach we've taken, which is it's very pragmatic yeah. about, we're trying to solve a specific problem, which is how you make a low cost, flexible integrated circuit. And we don't really care what technology choices we have to make to get there. So it's not about printing. It's not about organic materials. It's not right. about a lot of the other things that sometimes become a little bit of a religion with people right. as to the approach they should be taking. Um, you know, we've got 13 different material layers in our IC stack and for each of those there's different trade-offs in terms of what's the right material choice, how does it need to be deposited, how do you pattern it, and how do you put all that together in a scalable manufacturing process. Right. And so what we've ended up with is a solution that is a, a very interesting blend of novel materials with what might be considered relatively conventional processing techniques, but the way they're put together still allows us to achieve the low cost point that we need. Right. And so you've developed your own sort of fab for the moment, and what are your plans going forward in terms of scaling this up? Is it scalable? Um, yes. Have, right. Yeah, so uh, I guess a key part of our mm. invention is really the manufacturing model that goes along with the process right. that allows us to get very high throughput production, but still maintain the low yeah. cost structure. So our first fab, has capacity for about a billion circuits. 
Uh, wow. That's installed in the northeast of the UK, um, and we're gradually ramping that up um, you know, as we as we speak. You know, our plan beyond that is to continue to add our own manufacturing capacity, and in fact, you know, we have some uh, innovations since we installed that first line in order to actually increase the capacity further. So our next line will probably have close to four or five billion unit capacity wow. uh, for a similar cost right. um, but then beyond that um, you know, our growth will be a combination of increasing our own production capacity with our own lines but also putting them on our customer premises right so one of the unique aspects of our FlexLogic approach is not only is it low capital cost but it also maintains its own clean environment so you can put it in a more typical uh, industrial environment rather than in an, in an electronics clean room uh, and that combined with the fact that we have very high si cycle times, less than 24 hours for start to finish production, and this fully automated software controlled production means we could put it on site in an RFID tag manufacturing plant, for example, right. and it could be doing just in time production of flexible ICs as they're used right. for downstream assembly. And so for the first products, what is the specification of the flexible ICs and what, what is the range of what you can do? I know you've demonstrated with one of your investors arm a microprocessor. So what, what's that sort of range of capability you currently have and where do you see that going? Yeah, so, so range of capability is one thing and product specifications yes, yeah, is obviously yeah, slightly yeah. different. So our, our initial products are intentionally fairly conservative mm -hmm. and they focus around a proprietary RFID protocol that we've developed. Uh, the reason for a pro proprietary protocol is twofold. One is it does make our life a bit simpler in terms of the design and qualification mm -hmm. of it as a product, but also because we control the protocol, it actually also allows us to reduce the cost of the reader compared to a conventional off-the-shelf reader. Right. So in a closed system RFID environment where the customer is worried about the cost of the reader infrastructure as well as the tags, it actually allows the total solution cost to be optimized even further. Right. So that's our very first products, and then we have a roadmap of other RFID variants, as well as building in additional capabilities such as sensing and more processing. And as you mentioned, sort of one thing that we've been using to drive our R&D around development of our platform mm. is things like the project with ARM around a 32-bit uh, mm. microprocessor SOC, which is right. not something that's viable as a product today, but it's been very helpful in really stressing the technology and seeing uh, how complex can we make things, where are the shortcomings, what are the things we need to improve. Right. right. Uh, and so in between that, we've also got an interesting sweet spot now with our recent launch of the Flex IC Foundry, where we're working with Arm and a number of other customers who are designing their own circuits within a certain range of capabilities uh, that we then make on our FlexLogic line. So tell me a bit more about the Flex IC Foundry. What does that actually mean and, and how is that helping your partners and customers? So in one sense, it's analogous to what we see already in the silicon mm. world where uh, it's effectively segmented into most silicon products are uh, split between a fabulous designer who has the idea and designs the circuit and then you have a foundry that manufactures it. Right. You, know, you have a small number of integrated device manufacturers like Intel who can afford to do both, but in most cases it's split between the two. And this has a number of benefits because it means you can decouple the manufacturing from the design ideas and the, and the development process around right. that. So that's something we thought was, was quite useful for us, in particular because our, uh, our development of products was basically limited by having a very small design team. Right. And actually, if we can let other people's design teams have access to our technology, it means we can actually uh, enable the technology uh, to be driven into see. many more applications much more quickly. So what it actually means in practice is we have what's called a process design kit. This is a standard set of uh, things that are defined in uh, an electronic design automation flow. It defines the devices that we have, the models for how they perform, the uh, layout rules for actually how you physically yeah. lay it out, and the standard cells, if you like. So basic building blocks such as NAND gates and NOR gates and so forth. Right. And these are packaged in a, in a set of files that can then be used by any fabulous designer to design a circuit nice. and tape out a, a layout file that we can then use to manufacture. Right. So who is this open to or, or how are you planning to allow companies to engage with you in terms of using that? So at the moment that's in beta phase. So right. we, we're working with a limited number of partners. So as well as ARM, it's companies like IMEC, yeah. Uh, who have a very, very long experience in, in electronic design. Surma Group, another big electronics mm -hmm. company, as well as, for example, uh, companies like Talking Things, who are already a customer for our standard RFID products, but are now using this platform to develop their own custom RFID right. circuits. Um, 
as the technology matures, and particularly as the PDK matures, and we have confidence that what gets designed, you know, works exactly as specified yeah. in manufacture, then we'll open that up right. as a, you know, something that anybody can use. Fantastic. Well, congratulations on this year, and I look forward to your further developments. Thank, Thank you, you very Scott. much. Cheers.